Chapter 54, But Westward Look But Westward, Look A no man awoke to the trill of birds and a strange hissing that sounded apart from the usual wind in the brittle leaves above them, though his dulled mind did not dwell on this. He shifted uncomfortably in his blankets. There was something important about that day, some dark worry pressing on his heart, until he suddenly remembered just what awaited him later that noon and the full burden of his fate sank upon him. Glad for anything to distract himself, a no man opened his eyes slightly. The clearing was filled with a pale dawn light, what little sky he could see past the canvas, a wan cloud streaked amber, while across the camp, the blurry figures of Frithi and Jahara were stood having a whispered argument. Fine, you did not wish to wake the boy, but you did not need to take everyone else's watches as well. Hissed Jahara and a no man suddenly realized that it had been their quarrel he had been listening to all along. I know, I know, conceded Fritha through a stifled yawn and he could hear the smile in her voice, but you just looked so sweet, all nestled beneath your blankets, I didn't have the heart to wake you. Foolish girl. Jahara scolded almost affectionately and Fritha laughed quietly, twirling back and forth on one foot, hugging herself. I finished my book too, oh, the end was so good, I'm on a cloud. Well, your head is certainly up there, snorted the druid, but Fritha just laughed again, the gesture soon becoming another yawn, the girl stooping to catch up her bag and Jahara's large iron pot both. Can I borrow the cooking pot? I want to wash my hair. Yes, yes, fine, Jahara sighed, but mind you bring it back promptly, I will need it to make the porridge. I should just do everyone a favor then and let it float away. I heard that. A no man smiled to himself and closed his eyes once more listening to Fritha's footsteps fade and Jahara quietly rustling about the clearing as she built up the fire. He could not have said when it had happened, but that group, those people, felt like so much more than just traveling companions to him now. There was a pleasant familiarity to the way they worked and laughed and even quarreled, and he could not help but think on the unhappy truth that if he was accepted into the order, but then sent on campaign, there was a chance he would lose it forever. Just a few more moments lain there, thinking over his life and the many decisions that had brought him to that instant, before a no man finally sat, gathering up his bag, ready to rise and face whatever the day brought. Cerned was nowhere to be seen, the druid probably off in the surrounding woods making his prayers, but Minsk was there, sat up in his bedding, yawning as he rubbed a large hand across the back of his bald head, the man sending him a broad smile as he noticed him watching. Not long now, eh? A no man swallowed and nodded. No. Minsk gave a loud bark of warm laughter. Ha! Huh. You will be triumphant, young warrior, who is sure of it? A no man tried to smile in reply, but the thought that the ranger's hamster had confidence in him was hardly an inspiring one and he let his attention drift to the couple next to him. Herr Dallas and Ari still dozing in each other's arms. He watched the pair a moment, both looking far happier with each other in sleep than they did in their waking hours, before a no man realized what he was doing and turned away, uncomfortable. Jahara was settled once more on her bedding by now, rooting industriously through her bag to finally produce a small packet well wrapped in brown paper, the woman sighing in a satisfied way as she waited in her hand and glancing up to finally notice him. Ah, good morning, a no man, did you sleep well? Yes, thank you, he answered and then, wondering whether the woman was subtly hinting at something else, added quickly I was more than prepared to take my watch, my lady, but Fritha would not be swayed. Jahara offered him a dry smile. If you think I am ready to scold you, think again. I know the girl is as obstinate as she is foolhardy once she gets an idea in her head. Jahara, such flattery. I'm blushing. 
laughed a voice behind them and a no man glanced around to see Fritha stomping through the trees, her cloak hugged about her and hair damp. You're going for a wash, a no man? She confirmed with a glance to the bag in his hand. Well, I hope you've prepared yourself, because that water is freezing. Fritha laughed again as she threw herself down onto her bedding, but his nerves were already so bad now he could not think of an answer and merely offered her a weak smile as he rose, shouldering his bag to head for the stream. A no man moved through the trees, breath misting in the sharp air as he drew slow measured lungfuls in an effort to calm the writhing of his stomach. He had never been so nervous and part of him wished the whole thing was over with either way. But he had a whole morning of this agony to face yet and he would have to endure it as best he could, keeping himself occupied with a wash the best first step, he considered as he finally reached the stream. A no man had dropped his bag under a tree and pulled off his tunic and shirt in one when he noticed them at the bank's edge, Johara's covered iron cooking pot and a small linen bundle on the flat rock next to it. He threw the clothes to land on his bag and moved over to them. Crouching to uncover a bronze hand mirror, sliver of soap and fritha silver embroidery scissors. He lifted the lid of the pot next to them and steam engulfed him. As he had thought, hot water. He could not have said later how long he sat there just staring at them, unmindful of the cold breeze on the bare skin of his back, those four ordinary objects suddenly elevated to the status of relics. He would have expected many things of one such as her one who had been touched by great dark powers. She could have easily been corrupt, a force for unimaginable evil. Even as clearly good as she was, he would have expected a righteous passion, a judging hand of the gods themselves. But never before he met Fritha had he ever considered that any of Baal's children would be so thoroughly nice. Mending his coat the night before, taking his watch for him and now this things that did nothing to really help him with the trial he would too soon have to face and yet she did them anyway, as though to show she realized how important it was to him. Fritha was right, the water was very cold. With gritted teeth, a no man waded across to the deeper bank and stooped to wash as best he could, reminded of why he did not attempt such very often. The soap seemed to be the last of one of her better ones and worked into an easy lather he suspected for when she did not wish to linger overly long on cold mornings. He broke off that line of thought quite quickly though, thinking about her washing making him feel uncomfortable. Finished, he waded back to the bank, rinsing off any remaining soap with the hot water she had provided and climbing ashore to dry and dress. He had taken the chance to trim his beard on the night they had spent at Diarnas Keep though he took a moment to take up the mirror and tidy it by hand. He had worn it for so long now, he could barely recall what his face had looked like without it and what he remembered probably wasn't all that close to how he looked now anyway. He took in the broad forehead, strong brow and full lips. His skin was a shade darker than his sister's had been but the light blue eyes were the same and the overall effect was not displeasing. He wondered vaguely if anyone else thought so too. A no man sighed, shaking his head as he laid the mirror back down next to the soap and scissors, wrapping them in the linen once more, before refilling the now empty pot with water and starting back to camp. The canvas was down and packed away by now, Ari and Herr Dallas awake and sat up in their bedding just as Minsk and Fritha were, Jahara stood and tending the fire. Ah! You have brought back the cooking pot, a no man, greeted Jahara as he approached, good. The fool girl apparently forgot it when she returned from washing her hair. Fritha looked deeply offended at this unfounded suspicion, though it could not quite hide her smile. Ah, the faith you have in me, Jahara, it warms the heart. Jahara ignored her. Pass it to me then, she continued, holding her hand out to a no man and he obliged her, setting it over the fire. Jahara nodded her approval. And you filled it too, very considerate. Fritha. The girl waved a hand in the woman's vague direction and steam instant billowed from the pot. A no man watched it a moment, 
wondering whether he should be worried by the effortless power Fritha seemed to be developing, before turning his attention to the girl herself, throwing down his cloak to settle beside her and press the small linen bundle into her hand. Thank you, I didn't expect, well, my thanks. Fritha smiled, seemingly bemused by his gratitude. You're quite welcome. Hey what are you doing? She asked, glancing back to the druid to watch her drop five eggs and pour a good measure of rice into the now boiling water, that's not porridge. Hmm, oh no, agreed Jahara with a deliberate nonchalance, the cook, Elise gave us a few eggs and some dried fish along with the other supplies gifted by the keep. I had forgotten until I checked my pack this morning. You forgot, eh? Seems to be a lot of that going around, doesn't there? Fritha commented with a shrewd look. But Jahara merely told her to pass the saffron, before going back to her cooking. Something smells most pleasant, came Cerned as he finally arrived back at the camp moments later, what are we having? Kedgeri, answered Fritha, barely glancing up from where she was peeling the now boiled eggs, passing them back for Jahara to slice into the rice, the fire crackling as she threw in the dark speckled shells and no man watched the two at work. Jahara knew he did not like porridge. Was he to believe it was merely a coincidence that it was on that morning, of all mornings she just happened to decide to make something else? And in that moment, a no man felt suddenly touched by the support some of the others were willing to show him, however indirectly. He sighed deeply, Fritha glancing to him. Are you nervous? She asked quietly. He shook his head, but could do no more to further the lie and Fritha smiled. Well, we'll easily make the city by noon, so there's no worry of you missing the... Err, proceedings. She finished after an uncomfortable pause, the girl sighing as she turned back to her peeling, though we could have been there already if we had been more prompt in leaving trade meat. A no man said nothing. Fritha was clearly blaming herself for the delay, but he knew what had been the cause and he certainly did not fault her for it. Besides, part of him was glad to spend the last few hours traveling rather than sat in some room in the coronet with nothing to distract him from his growing worries. At the fire, Jahara was stirring the last of the fish into the pot, the appetizing smell of smoked haddock hanging in the air and a nomen was filled again with the overwhelming wish that the time would pass more quickly, the feeling conflicting with his growing desire to stop its passage completely and live forever in the peace of that morning. But, unsurprising, Time did not bend to his wishes and he watched as the sun slowly rose in the eastern skies, the day creeping on, carrying him unwaveringly to his fate. Cerned glanced up, trying to catch a glimpse of the robin he could hear singing somewhere above him. The forest was beautiful, still teeming with life and thriving even with the winter approaching. They had been walking all morning and were not far from the city now, he and Jahara leading the way, Fritha and Minsk walking side by side behind them and seemingly continuing their Rashami lessons, while the others brought up the rear. Cern sighed, letting the harmony of the world about him enter his heart. Ah, the verdure of these lands are balm for the soul. What is Kormir like? came a voice the man glancing back to find Fritha smiling politely. Cormir? I must admit I did not really visit any of the cities, though my grove within Hillac Forest was a beautiful place of ferns and mosses. And yet even such a sanctuary of nature had its drawbacks. He admitted, though he elaborated no more on this, Jahara sending him the slightest of smiles. In the end, he had only told her the truth of his old grove and grand druid there who had about as much tolerance of lycanthropes as Faldern had, though the man had at least had the civility to pretend he was not so prejudiced. No, Cerned continued, letting his eyes drift about him once more, the northern lands have a wild beauty to them, but even they cannot compare with the breathtaking fertility of these warmer climes. I sometimes feel as though these trees could grow forever 
it pains me to see so much of it taken by farmland. Minsk shrugged evenly. Perhaps, though Boo says people are of nature too, they must have places to live and eat, just as the birds and squirrels do. That may be so, conceded Jahara, though any encroachment of civilization on the wild places is a loss to be mourned. I can't see why nature and civilization can't just get along and live side by side, sighed Fritha, farms next to forests. That would be fine in the ideal, but in many cases I find the balance is impossible to reach, agreed Cerned gravely, where you see harmony, I see a blight slowly waiting to spread and take the whole. Fritha laughed brightly, laying an allying hand on Minsk's arm. Yes, well, where you would see harmony, we see lots of happy trees and lots of starving people. Cerned raised an eyebrow. He did not want to be the source of any arguments and from what he had seen of Om as he had traveled back south to trade meat, the farmlands seemed little increased since the last time he was there. Perhaps that is so. Over the history of Cormir, much of the wilder places and forests have been lost as farms expanded without check, I suppose I am more sensitive to such things than others. Well, began Jahara sternly before she stopped herself, the woman's gaze shifting to further down the path. Oh, wait a moment, we're getting ahead of the others. Come, along you lot. She shouted, frowning slightly as she continued. Hmm, Ari appears to be limping. Carry on walking, I will go and see what the problem is. And with that she left, Minsk looking torn a moment before he followed her, his concern for the elf evident and leaving Cerned and Fritha relativity alone. Fritha sent him a friendly smile as they simultaneously fell into step and slowed their pace. So, you're looking forward to our return to the city then? Why? He questioned a touch too quickly, should I be? The girl sent him a bemused look. No, at least I wouldn't have thought so with you being a druid and all, hence the irony of my question. I know Jahara hates the city, though perhaps I am generalizing somewhat. Cern shrugged. Perhaps, but your assumption still rings true in my case, no, I am not particularly looking forward to my return to the city. Return. She repeated, you have been there before. Sorry, oh. Cerned paused. He could lie here, claim he was referring to their return as a group, but it seemed a touch unnecessary and he eventually admitted, Yes, I have been there before, though it was two years ago now. Fritha watched him a moment, her look unreadable. Why did you want to travel with us Cerned? You know we will be venturing away from the city less and less now winter approaches. Why? He repeated. Well why had he? Logically, she was right, his decision did not make much sense. Well, I could not have stayed in the grove despite how it may have seemed, and I feel I have outgrown my home in Cormier somewhat, it is good to get away from a place now and then, that you may appreciate it all the more when you return. She was still watching him curiously and he wondered if she suspected this was not the whole truth of it. Would there ever be a better time to ask her? Cerned glanced back to Jahara and the ranger, still occupied it seemed, and the druid returned his gaze to Fritha, his decision made. But I suppose the main reason was that I wished to travel with you. Me. The girl repeated, looking thoroughly unnerved and Cerned could not help but smile. I see some explanation is in order. Perhaps there is something I might ask you. Anything if it will help you make some sense. As a servant of nature, I am dedicated to preserving the balance that exists between all living things and in doing so I have become practiced at sensing the balance within all creatures. But you, there is an aura about you that I cannot place. I don't know quite how to phrase this, but are you, well, normal? 
the girl flushed instantly, though seemingly more with anger than any embarrassment on her part. Oh, don't mince your words in any effort to save my feelings, will you, Cerned? She hissed, are you normal? You cheeky sod. Please Fritha, he soothed, he had been prepared for awkward and reticent, not offended. I meant no insult and this is not a matter of your character, indeed, some things run deeper. Though you can take the leopard from the jungle, he still has his stripes. The girl sighed dully. Spots, cerned. Leopards have spots. You're thinking of tigers. But it is a good analogy, for the stripy leopard, who acts and sounds and lives just like all the others and yet that difference always remains. She sighed again, glancing about her to check their discourse was still a private one, before catching him with that near black gaze, I'm one of the children, cerned, a ball spawn. He had not been expecting that and for a moment all he could do was stare, as though waiting for her to smile and admit she was just teasing him. But it did not come and he realized she was not joking. Well, it was worse than he had anticipated but at least he knew now what had been unsettling him for so long and the girl herself had been so readily accepting of his own abnormality, that he felt it would have been rather unfair to make any fuss about it. One of the children. I see. How does it go? The Lord of Murder shall perish and in his wake he shall sown a score of mortal progeny. Fritha smiled wryly, but it didn't reach her eyes. So saith the wise Alondo. A silence fell between them and they walked on for a while neither of them speaking, cerned very aware of the time passing, the many questions he had still buzzing about his head, until... What is it like? Like? Fritha repeated with a frown, it's not like anything really, well, not that I'm aware. Not that you're aware. Well, I've always been one, haven't I? She laughed at his disturbed expression. It is not a mask I wear, cerned, nor is it something buried deep and hidden at my heart. It is just who I am, as much a part of me as my silly ginger hair. Does being a werewolf define all that you are? Well, no, he admitted, but I was not always a werewolf. Well. I was not always a ball spawn, at least, I did not know I was. I only found out a few months ago. Am I a different person now that I know? You are not a different person, no, he pressed evenly, but you must be aware now that there is a greater difference in how you can affect the world and others about you. Fritha shrugged. I am no different, unfortunately how others seem to wish to treat me is. It can cause trouble, I know. But there is no need to fret too much about you balance, cerned, I do not want to change the face of Feyerun, I want only a peaceful life. He was about to say she may well be wishing for the impossible, but he expected the girl probably knew this already and in the end he just nodded once. I see. And who knows of this unique lineage? The girl smiled wearily. Well, it feels like the whole of Om some days, but if you mean among my friends, Jahara, Minsk, and Anomen. Ah, a secret, is it? Then it shall be as the worm in the winter, buried deep and dormant in the frozen earth of my heart. Yes, well, I'd appreciate that. And while we're on the subject of the secret, what are your intentions towards Eri? Her question was so abrupt it took Cerned a moment to reply, his face feeling suddenly very hot, though his voice did not betray his discomfort. You will forgive me, but I don't see how that is any of your business. The girl sighed, wryly amused. Well, that's the funny thing about being the leader. Lots of things you really wish weren't your business, suddenly are. He paused a moment, watching her to see if she would give up her pursuit, but she merely stared back at him and in the end he sighed and surrendered. 
Though I will not deny to finding Eri quite charming, I have no intention of seeking of her anything other than the friendship I would wish from any of my companions. Fritha nodded evenly, seemingly satisfied that her group would not have to face any trouble of this sort and smiling as she turned back to their path, the trees finally thinning up ahead and the girl halted at the forest's edge, gazing down the valley. Ah, look at that! And Cerned followed her to gaze down on the verdant of Catlan River Delta shimmering under the mid-morning sun, the city, all domes and spires from this distance, sparkling upon the rich green patchwork of fields, and haloed by deep indigo blue of the sea, had it really been two years since he had seen it last? It gave no hint of the crowded squalor that could be found within its walls and Cerned could almost understand the girl's delight. Ah, have we arrived? came a voice and the pair turned to see Jahara, the others not far behind her. Oh, you've caught up, smiled Fritha, what was wrong with Eri? A.B., disturbed by our quiet passage, got all tangled under the dove's skirts and stung her leg in its confusion, explained Herr Dallas, looking as though it was taking a momentous effort not to laugh. All better now? asked Fritha kindly the elf nodding and looking more than a touch embarrassed. Well let's be off then. So much for time, not bowing to the wishes of mortals, a no man considered nervously, the journey back to the city had seemed to pass worryingly quickly and the walk through with Katla had gone even faster. One moment they were just passing under the busy city gates, the bells tolling high sun, the next they were stood before the huge sandstone gateway of the order. A no man drew a deep breath as they moved over the threshold, taking a moment to gaze up at the richly carved underside of the arch, well aware that it could be the last chance he would ever have to do so. The courtyard before them was crowded, young men who had already faced their judgments glowing with their achievement and surrounded by their relatives, proud fathers, teary mothers, brother, sisters, and young wives, all smiling and talking and a no man felt a little out of place as he moved through the press with, not his family, but a mismatched group of people he had barely known more than a season. They were heading towards the Great Hall, the huge solid building opposite that stood at the heart of the Order compound. A no man halted suddenly as pair of excited children enjoying a duel with wooden swords nearly barreled into his legs, their mother appearing an instant later to gather them away with an apologetic smile. Ah, you have arrived, Squire Anoman, came a warm commanding voice over the bustle and Anoman glanced up sharply to see the broad toe-headed figure of Sir Harn, one of the Order's higher-ranking knights, the man beckoning him over to the right of the main doors where a small, far less ornate doorway was set. Good, good. You're the last one, there were worries you had been delayed. Now, in here then. He ordered genially gesturing to the door he was holding open onto a small square room of white marble and high windows that a no-man knew led onto the great hall. He nodded once, having seen the ceremony enough times for others to know what was expected of him, his heart suddenly beating heavily against his ribs as he turned back to the group behind him, his eyes dropping briefly to the girl at his side, trying to find the words in his apprehension. Everyone, I... No time for that now, young man, Harn cut in, genially ushering he and Fritha towards the door before him, the lady can attend you if she wishes. In you both go and just wait until your name is called. And before either could speak, the door was shut and a sudden silence engulfed them, the sounds of the bustle outside muted and unreal. A no man felt numb. He had waited for this moment so long lost himself in so many daydreams of this triumph, that now it had finally arrived it did not feel real. You should probably change now, came Fritha next to him, her voice quiet and more solemn than he was used to hearing it, it will likely be soon. He nodded, dropping his pack to remove the coat she had mended and his dark blue formal tunic, Fritha averting her eyes as he quickly changed before she helped him on with the jacket circling him to brush down the shoulders as he buttoned it closed. There, she said, 
stopping before him and looking him up and down, you. Squire and no Mendelrin. The deep echoing voice made them both start, the pair glancing sharply the door opposite. Fritha turned back to him, nodding once and clapping him heartily on the arm, steadily holding his gaze. You'll be fine. Will you come with me to hear the judgment? If she had any hesitation at his request, she did not show it, just nodded again, unusually serious, and shouldered his bag to follow him into the hall. The room was much more crowded than on Fritha's last visit, the myriad of people that lined the walls watching them as they entered and doing nothing for the hall's imposing air. A no man walked forward down the three steps into the sunken center of the room, Harn beckoning her over with a friendly smile to stand before one of the surrounding pillars next to him. Bright scarlet banners emblazoned with the order's crest hung from the ceiling, the people around her all dressed in their finery or wearing ceremonial armor. The whole effect was very grand and Fritha felt rather out of place stood in her only clean but rather creased tunic, the austerity of the place making her nervous. It didn't help that she was exhausted, but she kept on her best behavior, stood alert and watchful and trying not to fidget, very aware of the fact that her yawning her way through the proceedings would be only marginally less embarrassing for a no man than his father turning up drunk. Prelate Wes Allen was stood at the opposite end of the hall before the huge statue of Torm, his armor shining in the sunlight that was pouring through the tall windows behind him. A no man had taken his place knelt on one knee before him and Wes Allen let his gaze travel the room once before he began, his grave voice echoing about the silent hall. A no Mendelrin, son of C.O.R. and Moyarala, do you stand before me pledged to the service of justice? Do you stand before me pledged to the service of righteousness? A no man kept his head bowed respectfully but his voice still carried to every corner of the room the confident tones betraying none of the turmoil Fritha knew was within him. Prelate of the Order, I do so stand. I pledge my life to the service of justice and righteousness. Ano Mendelrin, do you stand before me seeking a knighthood of this order? I do so stand. Do you stand before me prepared to accept the judgment of this hall? Are your past actions laid bare? Shall I judge you as I was once judged? Fritha thought she sensed the slightest pause and if ever a no man's nerves were apparent, it was then, though his voice was steady as he answered. My past actions I lay before you. I ask that you judge me as you were once judged. Wes Allen drew a deep breath and closed his eyes. Fritha mirrored his movements eyes squeezed shut and fingers crossed behind her back, the tension in the room so she could barely stand it. Finally, she heard the prelate sigh, Fritha opening her eyes to see him gazing down at a no man, the man sending Sir Ryan the slightest nod. So shall it be. The judgment is clear. A no Mendelrin, you have proven yourself worthy. I dub thee Sir a no man, Knight of the Order. Sir Ryan had stepped forward the sword he held drawn and he let the blade rests upon each of his shoulders in turn and finally his head before sheathing the blade to pass down it to the still kneeling man, Arise Sir Knight! The cheer that went up from the surrounding people was deafening, a no man's friends rushing in to congratulate him and she recognized Eric and Simon among them, though Fritha herself hung back, smiling as she applauded politely and feeling almost faint the girl leaning back against the pillar behind her and trying not to look as relieved as she felt lest people think she had not believed he would be accepted. Fritha felt a pleasant warmth glowing within her, more than happy for the man who, until the last moment, had still seemed so plagued with doubts. She smiled as she watched him shake hands and laugh with the men, the sound of them seeming overly loud in that usually hushed building but it died suddenly as he caught a glimpse of her through the press, ignoring the well-wishers to move towards her, the way parting silently before him. Fritha smiled as warmly as she could under the gaze of the assembled order.
Congratulations, Anomen. Anomen said nothing, words seemed beyond him. His eyes were shining and she had never seen him look quite so alive. For a moment she thought he would embrace her, but at last he seemed to gather himself, merely laying a hand on her shoulder and putting all that feeling into a firm squeeze that would have made her wince had she not still been on her best behavior. Sir Anomen, a word please came Sir Ryan Troll's deep voice from somewhere outside the group and Anomen nodded once to her before breaking contact and moving through the thinning crowd. Fritha stood a moment, feeling self-conscious as all eyes turned back to her, clearly interested in one who had been so singled out by their fellow, before she scuttled back outside to her own friends. How was it? asked Herr Dallas by way of greeting, the group pretty much where she had left them stood a little apart from the crowds by the stables, he sounded as though he was about to lose control of his bladder when you left us. Herr Dallas! scolded Ari sharply. Fritha smiled, their bickering unable to extinguish her good mood. He passed, he's just talking to Sir Ryan now. Thanks be to Sylvanus, breathed Jahara her face lit with a relief that Fritha knew all too well. I for he would have been unbearable had he not, agreed the bard. Sparrow! cried Fritha laughingly, lightly slapping his arm for good measure and Herr Dallas grinned. Ah, come now, I am happy for him, truly. Here, let's wait over there, she smiled, pointing over to the stable wall. He'll be able to see us better from the doors. I, we should position ourselves so he can best see us, his adoring followers. Herr Dallas Ryan was stood at the edge of the hall, a little apart from the crowds that had been so centered around him and a no man joined him there raising his hand in respectful salute of the man who had been his mentor those past four years. The night commander smiled, returning the gesture as he spoke. So, Sir Anomen, I cannot say how pleased I am to be finally able to name you so. It has been a long time in the coming, but most deserved in the end. Anomen dipped his head in a slight bow trying to find the words to express the pride and gratitude he felt with him. I thank you, sir, for both your words and your guidance all these years, I am sure I would not have even seen this day without it. The man nodded once, gravely accepting his thanks, and a no-man swallowed, feeling the question that had been pressing on him for over a ten day now and stealing himself to continue. In truth. Sir, I once thought that I might not achieve my goal in spite of all your support. I was sure I would not be accepted to knighthood after I allowed Reynold and his brothers to go free. Ryan raised a dark eyebrow in a look of mild surprise. Really, is that what you thought? It was after you confessed to me you had allowed the fallen ones to go free, that I finally decided you were ready to be put forward to be judged. Sir. The old paladin smiled slightly. I knew that not all here would look upon your decision as the correct one, and I could tell by your bearing that you too were unsure of the reception your choice would receive. Yet you were willing to risk everything, all you had so hoped and strived for to act in goodness and do what you believed what right, and that is the measure of true knight. Ah, Sir Harn. Ryan greeted as the paladin arrived, a no-man moving quickly to salute him, though he was not fast enough, the blonde knight beaming as he shook his hand. Congratulations, my lad, very well done, this will be you, one day, Mark, Harn added to the young squire at his side, the boy smiling nervously and, for all his timidity, a no-man could see the clear respect he held for his knight in his eyes. Ah, sir a no -man. Excellent. Came a familiar voice behind them, and a no man turned to see Prelate Wes Allen join their group, the older man smiling kindly, I am most glad to have another worthy soul join our brotherhood. 
A no-man merely nodded and saluted, unsure of how else to reply. My lord. So, what plans have you now, Sir Anomen? The prelate continued genially, There is a command in Sir Harn's regiment available, is there not? Why indeed, prelate, agreed Harn enthusiastically, the great siege of Muran is a fine place to start a career and we are always in need of experienced warriors. Anomen swallowed, feeling rather on the spot. Well, my lord, I was hoping to remain traveling with my group. I have undertaken a quest to help the Lady Fritha rescue her friend and I should like to see it through. Ryan opened his mouth to speak and a no man could tell that he was less than keen on the idea, perhaps thinking it was not the best way for a new knight to distinguish himself and his nascent career, though he was too late in his protest. Yes, yes, nodded Wes Allen, smiling broadly. I cannot see why not. Your group is getting quite the reputation for good works about Om and it is important to see those oaths we have undertaken through until the end. Well. The prelate continued, straightening slightly, I should go and speak to other knighted. Congratulations again, Sir Anomen. Sir Ryan, Sir Harn, Mark. And with that the prelate left them and one by one. The others made their final congratulations and drifted away as well, though a no man was not left alone for long. So, Sir a no man, is it now? Came a familiar voice behind him, I must admit, it has quite a nice ring to it, not as nice as Sir Simon, of course, but you can't have everything. A no man smiled, turning to see Simon and Eric his two closest friends lingering after the ceremony for the chance to talk to him properly, the younger man grinning broadly, Congratulations again, friend. Yes, well done, agreed Eric, the knight stepping forward to heartily shake his hand and a no man could sense the solemn sincerity behind their light-hearted bearing. So, what have they got planned for you now? asked Simon as the three turned as one and began slowly walking towards the doors. I have been allowed to continue my journeys with this group. I made an oath to myself that I would help Fritha retrieve her friend, I am pleased I will not have to remiss on my word. Simon nodded nonchalantly. Yes, quite so. And your young leader is as fair as ever, I see. Yes. She is very nice. Nice. Repeated Simon, looking as close to losing his temper as a no man had ever seen him. Well, you cannot deny it is an improvement on capable, quipped Eric mildly, but a no man just shook his head. You misunderstand me. I mean she is nice, so full of quiet kindness, I cannot say. The men before him shared a look. A no man, began Eric, frowning slightly, have you formed an attachment? No, of course not, he dismissed quickly, turning from them to hide the flush he could already feel burning his face. Another silence in which he suspected another glance was shared, but a no man did not look back to confirm it, gazing out through the open doors to the slowly emptying courtyard. His friends stood by the stables all laughing and talking brightly. Well, continued Simon behind him, we've arranged to go out later to celebrate, just us two, Sadur, Dysfeld and a few of the others who are about, why don't you invite some of your companions along as well? The more the merrier. A no man nodded absently as Eri glanced up to finally notice him at the doors and sent him a friendly wave. Yes, perhaps. Everyone else looked around at the gesture and he left the great hall to warm applause, his friends all smiling and congratulating him. Well, look at you, I suppose I can call you Nightling no longer, eh? Laughed Herr Dallas, dipping his head in the suggestion of a bow as Jahara more properly shook his hand. Congratulations, Anomen. I am pleased to see your perseverance has come to fruition. 
Another glorious warrior joins the ranks of righteousness, boomed Minsk, clapping him on the back with an enthusiasm that nearly floored him, who knew you would be accepted? We're all so happy for you, a nomen, added Ari with a smile, the girl glowing, you must be so proud. A nomen nodded, trying to find a reply for them all. Yes, I am pleased though I could not have done it without help. His eyes fell on the girl next to her, and he wondered if Fritha knew how grateful he was to her, though if she did, she did not give any hint of it, the girl merely sending him a small smile. And westward look, she said mildly, casting her eyes out beyond the walls, the land is bright. A no man felt himself grin and together they laughed. What is this? Laughing on such a solemn occasion, a no man, for shame. And a no man turned with the others to see Simon walking across to them, Eric not far behind, the young man shaking his head at a no man with a disappointed look which did not hide the spark of amusement to his eyes. Ah, my lady Fritha, he continued warmly, stepping forward to take her hand and bow slightly, I should have known wherever you are, joy is sure to follow. Yes, that or trouble, Fritha said and Simon laughed, the two men joining their group, everyone talking amiably amongst themselves and a no man found himself next to Fritha, the girl handing his bag back to him, her eyes falling pointedly on the ceremonial sword now slung at his hip. So does this mean you will be joining Minsk and I, and be laying down your mace in favor of the blade? A no man smiled slightly. I think not, my lady. Though it is battle-worthy, this sword is more a sign of my knighthood and my mace serves me better. He let his eyes run along the scarlet gold-bound scabbard and over the ornate hilt, a pair of cast gilt lions on the cross guard while the pommel bore the crest of the order. There was a time when I doubted I would ever have the honor of bearing one. They are made here by the order's smiths and each is a unique work. He took up the scabbard to proffer it to her and Fritha drew the sword carefully, weighing the blade in her hand and making a couple of practice swings before turning it over to better admire the hilt. It's very well balanced and the etching along the blade is quite beautiful. She smiled, handing it back to him and he nodded, his voice coming slightly hoarse. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, is it off to your theater, my raven? Cut in hair Dallas, you said you would visit as soon as you returned to the city. Fritha pulled a face and sighed tiredly. Yes, I suppose I should. You are going with her? Straight away. Came Ari sharply, the tiefling looking for a moment as though he would blithely confirm this before he quickly shook his head. Why, no, my dove. The raven's skills have long since surpassed requiring my assistance. He praised with mock humility, his eyes flicking for the briefest of moments to a no man, though I do not like the idea of her making the way alone, perhaps the squire Simon could escort her. A no man felt his stomach lurch unpleasantly at the idea of Fritha and his friend alone together, a feeling that did not stem from any jealousy on his part either. Simon suddenly looked as though his birthday had come early, the squire sending a no man abroad, knowing smile. I am actually heading across the river to the northern quarters on an errand for my knight, milady, and I would be glad to join you. Fritha looked rather caught out by it all, but eventually she smiled and acquiesced with good grace. Er, well, that would be very kind of you, Simon. It was very nice to meet you Sir Eric. Congratulations again, a no man. And with that they made their farewells and left, a no man watching as they crossed the courtyard, their voices drifting back to him on the still air. You know I have known a no man these last four years, milady. Oh, please call me Fritha. Fritha, it is then.
I remember the first time I met a no man was in this very courtyard. Fritha's giggle rippled across the square and a no man felt a wave of dread as he imagined the trouble Simon could make for him while the squire had fun playing Soon's cup bearer. End of chapter